Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. And Merry Christmas. This is an exciting day. We're getting ready for the Christmas season. We're in the Christmas season. We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas Day. And it's just such a blessing to come before you. I just love you. I appreciate you. Just think, we've done this thing until December of 2020, and we thank God for that. We are so grateful to God for all that he has done for us. And so today, I want to talk to you because we are all going through something right now. We are all, we've all been impacted by the pandemic, and there are just so many things going on. So I want to talk to you today about holding on to hope during this Christmas season, holding on to hope during this Christmas season. And you might say, well, what does hope mean? Well, hope means that you believe for an outcome. You believe that things are going to get better. And I'm standing with you. I know all, uh, all of you who are watching, you are hoping that things get better. Some of you are going through with one thing and somebody else with another. But we all have needs. We're all hoping to see the hand of God move. But before I get started, I want to pray. Then I want to read a scripture and then we're going to delve into the word. And I have an exciting program for you today. I have my grandchildren. They're going to be on today. I have Kennedy. I have Kobe. I have Addison. I have Sarah and I have Hannah Elizabeth. And they're going to be singing today. Now, they are not professional singers, but I told them, I said, you all can come on Mimo's program on Christmas and you can sing. So they're very excited. Some of them are going to be uh, doing a reading and some are going to be singing. So if you know some children that would like to see some other children on TV today, call their parents and tell them to come on and watch Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. So Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this day, God. You've been so good, so kind, and so merciful, God. You let us still be in the land of the living, God. You've taken care of all of our needs, God. You've been with us, and you've protected us through all of the things that we've gone through, God. And we just want you to have your way during this program today, God. I pray that someone will get a word of encouragement today that's going to give them some hope and let them know that you've not forgotten about them and that the best is yet to come. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we appreciate you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is coming from Isaiah uh, 4 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Isn't that good news? That's what Christmas is all about. It's about a king being born in a lowly stable more than 2,000 years ago, coming into the world to give us some hope, to save us from our sins. And so what does it mean again to have hope? It means to have hope is to believe an outcome will will come and make things better. It will, it will, it will be a time when, when things will not be like they are now. We got to keep hoping. We got to keep believing. We got to hope against the things that the enemy is telling us. Things will never change, but they will change. I am a firm believer that Trouble won't last always. I am a firm believer that there is an expiration date to everything that goes on and that might be going on right now in our lives. Now, when we have hope, we see opportunity in challenges. I want you to remember this rather than challenges and opportunities. We see opportunities in challenges 
rather than challenges and opportunities. So that means while we're going through this, we are going to see the opportunity to serve God more, to pray more, to read the word more, to appreciate each other more, to love each other more, to reach out to our fellow men, to not think that we can make it on our own without Jesus being in the center of our lives. And above all, we are going to learn to appreciate God more, to thank him more, to praise him more, to love him more, to serve him more, while we are hoping for things to change around us. When we lose hope, we, we lose just about everything. When, when a person says that I have no hope, that means that they have given up. But we are not going to give up. We are going to look up. We are going to get up and we are going to make up and we're going to stand up and we're going to continue pressing forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Because, you know, I learned one thing it's not over until God says it's over. Romans 12 and 12 says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulations, continuing instant in prayer. We all have one thing in common right now. And that is, we all believe in God for something. And notice the scripture says, continuing instant in prayer. Be ready to pray all the time. Every day when you get up, get up praying. Every chance you get, call on the name of Jesus. Everybody you see, tell them how good God is. Change the way you've been talking. My husband has a saying that says, if you act the way you want to be, soon you'll be the way you act. So if we want things to change, we got to start acting like changes on the way. We got to start praising God. You know, I think everybody who's watching this program, you need to have your prayer partner because we all feel down from time to time. Oppression tries to come with people shut in. Depression tries to come. And, and, and sometimes we just feel like we're just so burdened down. But if you have a prayer partner, if you have someone that you can call on the phone and say, look, so-and-so, I'm feeling a little down today. Will you pray for me? Let's have a word of prayer. There are so many things that we can do to help us make it through what we're going through. And in addition to the pandemic, you know, so many people have lost their jobs. Some people have been evicted out of their homes. Some people don't have money to buy food with. There's somebody right now who's fighting for life on a respirator. There's somebody right now whose loved one is in the hospital. There are just so many things we're dealing with during this Christmas season. And it's one thing about holidays. They either bring you a lot of joy or they, uh, they might pull you down. It's, it's emotions are stirred up during the holidays. And that's why I want to talk to you today about holding on to hope. If that's you, I have a word of encouragement for you today. If you feel like, can't go any further. I'm tired. I'm weary. I just want to give up. Somebody who's watching the program today might say, I just want to commit suicide. I want to just go on and get it over with. Don't do it. Don't do it. I beg of you, don't do it. Hold on a little while longer. There was someone in the Bible that I want to talk to you about today who had every reason in the world to give up. If anybody had a reason or a right to give up, this person did. And some of you probably know who I'm talking about, but his name was Job. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Job. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. You know, sometimes people say, you, I'm a Christian. Why is all this happening to me? This is not fair. Somebody wrote a book one time, said this shouldn't have happened to me. Sometimes we go through things and we wonder, what did I, what sin did I commit? What wrong did I do? You don't have to have done anything wrong. Life just happens sometimes. So that's what happened to Job. So I want to talk a little bit about Job and helping you to understand that if this man held on to hope, you can hold on to hope. Satan calls. Okay, first of all, let's before we go to that part, Job lost his cattle. He lost his servants. He lost his children. And Satan caused painful sores to break out all over Job's body from his head to his toes. And while he was scraping his sores with a broken piece of pottery, guess what his wife asked him? Why do you still trust God, Job? Why don't you just 
curse God and die. Now, it's one thing for somebody out there on the outside to tell you that. It's one thing to lose your children and your servants and your cattle. But when your spouse comes to you and say, go on and give up, curse God and die. He doesn't care anything about you. Is that if, if, if the enemy has told you that, don't you listen to that. That is not from God. That's straight from the pits. You've got to stand. And when the enemy comes in and says things like that, you have to have the kind of relationship that Job had with God. Because Job said, you know what? He said, naked I came into this world in my mother's womb. And naked I'm going to leave here. But he said, God, he said, I am going to trust in God. He said, God gives and God takes away. He said, blessed to be the name of the Lord. And one time he said, though he slay me, I'm still going to trust him. That's the kind of hope we have. But you know why Job could do that? Because Job had a relationship with the Lord. Job trusted God and God trusted Job. Can God trust you? Can he trust you not to give up? Can he trust you to look in the face of all of the things that's going on around you and say, I still believe God. I'm still trusting God. I have lost my loved one. Some of you have lost your loved ones and my heart bleeds for you today. But I say to you, you got to still trust God. You've got to still say God is a sovereign God and God still loves me. I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like. I want to tell you today, God still loves you. Sometimes people will say they love you, but they are not there with you. But the word says that I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. I'll never leave you. I'll never walk away from you. I'm going to be right here for you. In layman's terms that the young people use today, God is saying, I've got your back. Don't worry about it. You are coming out of this. And so Job lost everything he had, but at the end, his friends went, God told his friends, y'all go and let Job pray for you. And when he prays for you and, and, and you, for, he's gonna, you forgive them and, you, and he forgive you, you forgive him and he forgives you. And Job restored everything he had. In fact, at the end, he had more than he had at the beginning. Isn't that good news? Sometimes it looked like we get stripped of everything. And you're saying, Lord, what else? Some of you are watching today. It's been boom, 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 boom. One thing after the other. You lose this. You lose that. You, you have a problem here. You have a problem there. And you're saying, God, how much? How long? And Job probably said the same thing. But Job trusted God. Trust. He kept hoping. He kept confessing. He kept believing. He kept loving God. See, when we're going through tests, it's not easy to say, Lord, I love you. But if you can muscle up enough energy and enough tenacity to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though I've lost this, though I've lost that, though I'm going through this, though I'm going through that. This is a good time of the year for you to give your life to Christ. When I think about Christmas, I think about the wise men that came from the east because hope had come. Jesus had been born, born in a lowly stable, born out there where the animals slept. But guess what? He didn't want to be high and lifted up. He wanted us to know that he was a meek and humble lamb, that he came for all men, not just for the higher echelon, not just for the rich, not just for the famous. He wanted to know I'm coming. He wanted you to know I'm coming for all of you. I'm coming to save mankind from their sins. The shepherds were hoping for this time to come. They were watching their flock by night and they heard the good news that Jesus had been born and they went running to where he was. Jesus has, he, he was, he brought hope to them and he has hope for you today. Some of you, you've seen and you think I've done too much wrong. I've, I've, I've been in sin too long. There is no way for me to get saved. Honey, you're just right. This is a good time for you to get saved during this Christmas holiday because that's what Jesus came for. He came to seek and save those who were lost.
If we didn't need to be saved, he wouldn't have had to come to the world. God wouldn't have had to give his son and his son wouldn't have had to give his life. But he loved us so much. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you and me. And, and, and Jesus was born to set the captives free. We were all in captivity. We were all messed up from the floor up. There was no hope for us had not Jesus been born. And so during the time you're shopping and you're putting up your decorations and you're singing your Christmas songs and you're listening to your Christmas music, think about what Christmas is all about. And when you're going through it, it seems like you can't go through. I want to give you some little nuggets of things that you can do. First of all, you can get on the phone and you can call someone else who's going through something as bad as what you're going through or maybe worse than what you're going through. And you can encourage them. And only that that you give away ever become yours. While you're encouraging them, then God is building you up because you are, you're making a sacrifice. You're saying, I'm going to help someone else. So I'm believing God to take care of my business. Because if we take care of his business, he'll take care of ours. Another thing you can do during this holiday, and I know it's going to be hard for some of you. There's going to be an, a, a place at the table where your loved ones sat last year and they're not going to be there this year. And that's not going to be easy. But if you can just say, I'm going to think the way I want things to be in spite of everything, I'm going to believe that God is going to give me some peace during this season. If you during this season can listen to some good upbeat Christmas music. If you can memorize some verses from the Bible, so when this negative thing starts speaking to your in your ear, that you can quote that word and say, God said he never leave me and not forsaken me. God said he'd be with me always, even to the end of the world. And God is with me right now. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is going to strengthen me to make it through this time. And God said that he loved me with an everlasting love. And God said that whatever things I desire, when I pray, believe that I receive them and I shall have them. And God, I want some peace today. I want to be able to make it through this holiday. I want to hold on to hope, God. I don't want to give up. I don't want to be shaken by what I see, what I've gone through. But I want to look to the hills from whence cometh my help. I want to call on the name of Jesus. I want to believe that God is here with me. I want to feel the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Everywhere Jesus went, when he walked this earth, something happened. The people came to where he was because they were looking for hope. And he did something for them. And he's right where you are right now, wherever you are, if you're in the hospital, if you're at home, wherever you are right now, Jesus is right there with you. That little baby that was born in a stable 2000 years ago is sitting right next to you right now, has his arms stretched out saying, I love you. I am concerned about you. I know what you're going through and I want you to know that I'm going to bring you out of this. You've got to encourage yourself in the Lord during this time. There are so many things that we can do. Uh, having hope at Christmas means knowing that God is for us. Therefore, our past need not limit our future. Don't, don't think about what you've gone through in the past. Think about what God is going to do, do for you in the future. Think about the, the future being better than the past. Believe the word of God. Begin to quote. You know what? Someone said something to me yesterday and I didn't like what they said. And you know what I did? I said, no, that's not going to happen to me. So and so and so and so. I wouldn't accept that. When the enemy tells, whispers something in your ears, you've got to switch your brain. You've got to guard your thoughts. Don't listen to that negative stuff. You've got to say something for every negative word. He says, you got to say something positive. You are all by yourself. You don't have anybody, nobody. Oh, yes, I do have someone who loves me. And there are people who love you. I don't care where you are today. I want you to know not only does God love you, but there are people in the world who loves you. On the, on that Christmas night, that was a, that was a holy night. 
That was a night that brought hope to the world. It brought peace. It brought joy. And most of all, it brought salvation. Salvation was born at Christmas. Ooh, I felt that. Salvation was born at Christmas. Some of you might just want to say, you know what? I'm not Job. You talked about Job and how Job dealt with it, but I'm not Job. I'm talking about me right here, right now. No, you're not Job. But if you have the kind of relationship, if you build the kind of relationship with God that Job built, then you'll be able to go through it as well. You've got to decree and declare and make up your mind and resolve in your mind that you are going to strive to have some peace this Christmas. If you're still breathing, there's still hope. Now, if you're not breathing, you're not hearing me anyway. But if you have breath in your body and you can hear, you have ears to hear, you, there is still hope. Romans 15 and 13, I want to share this scripture with you. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 20 and 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. What does it mean to hold fast? It means to don't let go. It means to hold on regardless to what you see, how, what you feel. It means to just say, I'm going to hold on. I'm not going to let go. We used to play tug of war when I was teaching school. And one end would try to pull the other end so that they could pull the people from one side over on the other side. And each side would hold on with all of the strength they had because they didn't want to get pulled over. That's what you got to do. This is a tug of war that we're in. But you got to win this battle. You got to hold on to hope. You got to believe that there is a better tomorrow. You've got to thank God. That's the other thing that I didn't say a minute ago. When you look around, you see what you have left. Everybody has something left. Start thanking God for what you have left. Because you know what? If you think him, if you thank him for what you have left, he'll give you more. He'll pull you out of the rut that you're in. I remember David said that he was in, in the mud and the miry clay, the muck and miry clay. But he called on the name of Jesus and Jesus pulled him out. He said he was sinking, but Jesus pulled him out. Some of you today, you feel like you're sinking, but I want to encourage you. I want to tell you, I want to challenge you to believe and to know that you are coming out of this. This can be a Merry Christmas. God loves you. He never gives up on you. He sees the best in you that you often don't see in yourself. He knows what your future can be. He paid for your freedom with the price of his own son, Jesus Christ. Hold on to hope at Christmas. I'm excited about this Christmas. Despite what we're going through, I'm excited because Jesus is still Lord. He's still in control. He's still a God of love. He is still a, still a God of hope. And he said his thoughts of you are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. There's a hope and a future in him. Cast your brokenness and your hurt and your pain and all of your sins on the Christ child that was born more than 2000 years ago. Let him take your pain and turn it into hope because there is hope for the weary. Now I'm going to introduce you to my grandchildren that are going to participate on this program today. So don't you go away. We'll be right back. And when we come back, we're going to bring on Sarah and Hannah Elizabeth, Kennedy, Colby, and Addison. Stay tuned. We'll be back. If you are being blessed by this program, we need your financial support at this time. Please consider becoming a partner or making a donation to this ministry. Donations can be made using PayPal at Hannah Hopkins Ministries or by mailing your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. We appreciate your financial support. Please pray about being a part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ during this crucial time by making your donation today. If you have a prayer request, 
please call us at 1-800-305-1928. If you don't get an answer, please leave your name and number and someone will call you back. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. See my two front teeth. Gee, if I could only have my two front teeth, then I could wish you a Merry Christmas. It seems so long since I could say, this is Susie sitting on a distal. Gosh, oh gee, how happy I could be if I could only whistle. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. See my two front teeth. Gee, if I could only have my two front teeth. And I could wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas to you all. May God bless you large and small. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> we, we wish, wish you, you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. If you are being blessed by this program, we need your financial support at this time. Please consider becoming a partner or making a donation to this ministry. Donations can be made using PayPal at Hannah Hopkins Ministries or by mailing your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. We appreciate your financial support. Please pray about being a part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ during this crucial time by making your donation today. If you have a prayer request, please call us at 1-800-305-1928. If you don't get an answer, please leave your name and number and someone will call you back.